Well, it was the end, but the moment was prepared for. So Castor Valva, which will be the third in a trilogy of Doctor Who episodes, uh, beginning with Keeper Truck and then Megopolis and now this, where it's totally a revenge plot by uh, the Master. And so it opens up, uh, even before the theme song, of Tom Baker saying goodbye, basically. And, uh, and we find out the Watcher was the Doctor all along. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, of course, uh, regenerates into Peter Davison. So uh, when I initially saw Doctor Who, of course, this was part of PBS. Uh, was you know, didn't I didn't know anything I, the first time around? Didn't know anything about uh, regenerations. And looking back, there was mentions of it. I just didn't catch it at the time. Um, but I thought, oh, when Romana did that, they got the idea that they could have a new doctor from that. <laughs> no, that's not what it was. <laughs> uh, and then uh, so it was announced that uh, Peter Davison would be the new Doctor Who. Well, I knew who Peter Davison was because I knew him as Tristan Farnan from All Creatures Great and Small, uh, which is a fantastic uh, television series, easily one of the best of all time. Uh, just a really uh, remarkable achievement of that show. But uh, w when I heard that, I thought, oh, I guess they want him to be like Tristan, you know, because Tristan was kind of mischievous and would play pranks and stuff and get in trouble with his older brother, uh, Siegfried, and all that. And I, uh, maybe that's what they were thinking. Well, no, that's not. Uh, John Nathan Turner talked about this, that he, you know, he wanted a more heroic and vulnerable man. Um, and I, I took from that that he wanted to play it a little more serious, uh, to be somewhat opposition in opposition of Tom Baker's, uh, you know, wildly eccentric doctor, you know, uh, the, and it, there's a lot of things about the, you know, the eighties doctor who that I, I, not too happy with. Um, but I can understand what Nathan Turner was trying to do here. And I, I don't think he was wrong. Uh, the, to uh, seven years of Tom Baker and then trying to follow that with your own version of some wild, you know, certainly eccentricities are always an important part of the character and it needs to be worked in and not an easy task, but um, having him more toned down uh, as it was for Peter Davison, I think was the right move because if he had tried to if not outright copy tom baker some you know version of that it would have come off come off as you know a bit cheap and tawdry and uh it probably wouldn't have been all that well received um so there you have it uh you know he changes into this and so i understood that as he was going into it and uh, it was a recognizable face to me when this happened although uh, initially uh, with PBS, they didn't have the Peter Davison episode, so it was a nearly almost another year before I got to, I got to see them. <laughs> they just reran the Tom Baker episodes. When I finally did get to see the first episode of Robot, which I hadn't seen the first time around, <laughs> this oh, there's this other guy laying there. <laughs> And at first I was thinking, oh, he always turns white like with the Watcher and stuff. Is it no? That was just John Pertwee's hair and all that. <laughs> Eventually, there was this uh, special they had, which went into the history of Doctor Who, and uh, we got to see that. And there were some scenes from the upcoming, well, upcoming. It was probably it was already seen in uh, you know Britain and what have you, but um, of uh, Peter Davison's episodes and so. Uh, finally, they got around. They had the episodes, so I uh, got to see Peter Davison's first season, and uh, so there we were. And it's a continuation of where where it left off with uh, uh, Tom uh, going away, and you know, uh, Castor Valva. Um, I see it as the kind of the weaker of the three episodes as far as this trilogy goes. Uh, it it kind of it just comes down to a basic revenge plot for the master. Which, after foiling two of his plots, there certainly can understand why he's had it, you know. And but, good lord, what a you know, his elaborate trap is this M.C. Escher uh, town or castle or what have you that trapped the doctor in, <laughs> and the the means by which he gets there, because uh, his first revenge plot 
is that uh, he's he captures Adric. Uh, they have a scene where they're getting the Doctor into the TARDIS, and uh, the Master's TARDIS shows up. And turns out a TARDIS can shoot off lightning bolts, or, well, maybe Type 40s can't. I don't know what type the Master's is, but in a lot of ways, you have to assume it's superior to the Doctor's TARDIS. Uh, so he does this, knocks out the guards and everything, but he captures Adric. And they think Ad- that Adric gets away, and they bring him back into the TARDIS, and Adric sets the TARDIS off. But it's not really Adric. It's merely a projection of him from the Master's TARDIS. He's still held in captivity. Uh, meanwhile, the Doctor is having all kinds of troubles with the regeneration. It's going bad, and uh, he needs uh, to rest to recuperate. Uh, but the interesting thing of it, the first episode is probably the best of the, the four episodes of Castor Valva. And uh, Peter Davison does a pretty good job of you know being all out of sorts but also recreating the or try, you know uh, going through the personalities of past doctors in there you know, certainly Hartnell and Troughton and uh, it, it this is all great stuff uh, and there again there's a thing was is like I wasn't always a, a, that big of a fan of the costuming that John Nathan Turner uh, foisted on 80s Doctor Who and uh, giving Tom Baker the maroon outfit that being said, it's probably best that he uh, no longer wore the uh, multicolored scarf because then Peter Davison would have been tearing that one to shreds. <laughs> in this scene where he's tearing up the, the scarf so that he can use the uh, the yarn uh, to keep track of where he is because he's searching for the zero room. And this is a room that he can go in that uh, will enable him to rest and recuperate from uh, his uh, regeneration and boy I tell you they cut between uh, Tegan and Nyssa trying to figure out the TARDIS and then uh, Adric and the doctor in the hallways of the TARDIS and he goes all the way down to, not- to-, to where there's nothing of the scarf left so yeah geez this must have been hours because <laughs> that's a lot of scarf <laughs> uh, but you know he does this also, uh, somewhat uh, reminiscent of when uh, Hartnell uh, regenerated into Troughton, uh, boy, his pants changed. <laughs> and here, uh, Tom Baker's boots are gone, but the, the shoes are back. Because <laughs> that's, you know, that's how the outfit was supposed to be. Uh, with the two, and Tom Baker wore those early on, um, but uh, he preferred the boots. Uh, to, I guess to get around location shots and stuff and he just said yeah I'm not wearing those dumb shoes anymore I'm going to wear the boots and um, well okay but Peter Davison's not wearing them <laughs> it's like oh well I don't know maybe he changed in the hallway somewhere <laughs> before he went looking for the zero room uh, anyway that you know there's little tidbits like that but it is this interesting idea of uh, uh, getting, uh, you know, views uh, uh, deeper into the TARDIS, and they do that. You did that in uh, Invasion of Time, but of course they just use what was it, an abandoned hospital or whatever, and it's like, good lord, you know, that's what it is. Um, but it also mentions in here that uh, the the architecture of the TARDIS can be changed and manipulated and moved around, and of course rooms could be deleted. Um, they had previously done this with they, uh, the doctor had to jettison Romana's room. Uh, they did that. And so they got to do it again now because uh, Adric, under the power of the master, has sent the TARDIS uh, back in time all the way to the Big Bang. And as it closes in, it's getting hotter and hotter, and the TARDIS is going to be destroyed. So uh, the doctor, barely there, uh, he had been in the zero room and was, comf- and was com- you know, g- regaining his sanity, but he had to come back out of it, and he's still sick and all that. Uh, and then uh, Tegan had used her lipstick to mark the way back to the control room, but you were seeing it was melting and everything. And this is, well, because they're closing in on the Big Bang. So uh, he comes back, and uh, that's the solution he needed to boost for them to get out of it so they had to get rid of a room so guess which room went yes the zero room <laughs> but uh it it saves them and they uh, the doctor says well we can take the the doors and pieces of the zero room that's left and make a box <laughs> for him to rest in so they do that and then they get to actual uh castor valva no not the real castor valva <laughs> uh this was a planet 
that the TARDIS seemed to tell him that the, oh, this is a, a whole place where the Doctor could go rest and recuperate. Well, this is all just another the the second part of the Master's trap. If the first one didn't work, and good lord, uh, so it, 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 the sets are fine. You know, I mean, occasionally you can see where it's a set, but that you know it's okay. Uh, and it it's all to end up in this. Uh, yes, an M.C. Escher looking uh, reality where it's collapsing in on itself. And the reason is, is that it's it's not real. It was completely created using Adric's uh, mathematical excellent mind to uh, develop this place and trap the doctor in it uh, so that he could have this horrific hellish existence i guess uh and that's about it i mean they go through things oh you don't know what's going on there's all these people there seem like they're the natives but they were all completely created um it kind of reminds me of some of the next generation episodes where the holograms begin to realize that who they and what they are and that kind of thing and become sentient and so there's there's a moment of that where one of them does this and and they, their leader is revealed to be the master and so he attacks him but ends up destroying the mechanism by which the whole thing was worked with you know Adric and this web that he's you know locked him into and all that the thing about it though is the the master kind of falls apart pretty quickly and he doesn't understand he can't open the zero box he he uh the idea that he needed Adric to do it um, I guess you could, I mean, if he had done it himself, he would have trapped himself in there to begin with. So, he, you know, he wanted to use that Adric instead. So I guess you could put it that way. Um, but it, 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 you know, and he's had many attempts, uh, opportunities to trap the doctor and whatnot, but does it, you know, um, it's, it's not much of a big reveal at the end, uh, for it, but, you know, it was the scene to, bring back the master's ability to uh, of, the, of disguise which he had done in the past you know and that sort of thing but um yeah i it, it's it, the whole point of it and uh and it collapses in on it. oh well the doctor is weak because of his regeneration so he can't it confuses him and everything well that's convenient since uh he had mentioned earlier he'd already had this in mind if the big bang didn't work <laughs> because look he's willing to just kill the the doctor right then and there you know so he says oh that didn't work so now i've got this other plan which also requires adric to do and yeah it, it doesn't gel as well you know uh there's good performances in it peter davison does a good job of introducing himself as the doctor of course he had already played the doctor as this was not you know it, they had shot, I believe, four to Doomsday first for him, uh, and then had to go back and do Caster Bubble, I guess, because you know the, the the locations and stuff weren't available at a certain time. I forget what, but that's you know one of the things he did. Um, you know, but still, uh, he, he does a good job here for producing a first adventure for his Doctor here, uh, and there's a, there's cool elements in it, you know, with the TARDIS and everything, but. Um, yeah, this concept-wise, I don't, you know, and, and the master, you know, one minute he's brilliant and uh, ahead of everybody, and the next he really isn't. So, uh, not too happy with that. Um, but there, you know, there, there's some cool things there, and it's also an interesting thing thinking about it um, with Adric. You know, what happens to him ultimately, and then later. Yeah, there's an image of him used by the master to torment, you know, uh, Tegan and uh, Nissa and all that. It's like he could probably have an entire map of Adric's mind and recreate him completely. <laughs> yeah, if you think about it, <laughs> it's within there. And there's some of the aspects of, of projection and whatnot. Adric appears at one point uh, to the doctor and to later to uh, uh, Nissa, I believe, and uh, all that. It would have been interesting if one of the characters who you're led to believe is the villain, but it turns out to be that, you know, the part tree you guy is actually the master. But that that, that could have been a, a disguised figure of Adric uh, manipulating and changing things around uh, for the master. But ultimately, they, they talk about it. They tell you that Adric did this, Adric did that. They don't really show it to you, you know, and that it's kind of important to get that around where otherwise Adric is just sort of there. Um, but I don't know. That's the way they did it. So 
you know, there's another thing. It's like, and this is I only knew because of the, you know, the uh, the little extras talking about how it was made and stuff, and that when Adric was in the Master's TARDIS and he's or wherever he is, he might be back at the whatever the Castor Alba place was, but he's in the web, you know, and uh, he's talking to the Master and saying, hey, you you won't win or whatever." So the master wants to talk to him, so he has to hit a button and rise up to face Adric. <laughs> it takes forever, and it's his long pause, and I'm like, I don't know. Maybe he's just had him talk to him where he was. would have been better. Well, it turns out that the reason it's like that is because they they put Anthony Ainley on this uh, you know, lift uh, thing and uh, for him to use to rise up to uh, Matthew Waterhouse. And But the problem is, is that it had this really <laughs> loud noise <laughs> and so they behind the scenes footage you hear it and it's just <laughs> and you, you can't do any dialogue like that so that's why there's this long pause and silence because <laughs> you know they had to cut that out <laughs> oh boy i yeah i i would have just scrapped that and just have him talk to adric from from down below you know it just would be just as good uh, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Still, uh, you know, there's some, it, it, there's really some gorgeous shots of the countryside and stuff that they do and all that. And, uh, it's all very interesting. And that the whole thing is like, Oh, look, there's a, uh, uh, an instruction manual on the TARDIS. And at the end it's revealed, no, there isn't. <laughs> it was all an illusion. So there's cool things about it, but I don't think it's a fully uh, successful overall uh, episode uh, conceptually, but um, still, you know, uh, Peter Davison did a good job. Uh, the companions did as well, and of course, Anthony Andley, uh, I thought, m made a good master. So it still works as a, a good introduction of uh, the Fifth Doctor. Um, it seems like Pertwee's the one that gets the best of how to uh, get a, a doctor's new outfit, where he just he just finds it. <laughs> and uh, Peter Davison sort of does this, but the thing about the, the cricket outfit is not a bad one. Uh, it's actually a pretty good idea, uh, but the coat is. It, I just don't. It, I mean, I, I I understand that there's like for uh, like the, for the like award ceremony or trophy or what have you. That there, there is a jacket that they wear, so, uh, and uh, seen a couple of those, but they're jackets. They're not these long overcoats. So I always thought it should have been this jacket, you know, and uh, I would have thought that would have worked better uh, for it because basically it's just a yellow version of one of Tom's uh, gray coats, you know. Uh, but I, I guess that's what they were shooting for. But it's like, where would he get that? You know, it's just sitting there as if it was part of some cricket uniform, but is it? <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, yeah. But this is the, you know, the, well, the doctor's outfits really do become costumes, and he's in it all the time, and it doesn't change. You know, I think he gets a slightly different sweater, but not that's about it later on. Um, yeah, I, 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 that was never a good idea, whether they're just in the same clothes all the time, because, you know... You need to wash that. <laughs> yeah, well, but did, did yeah, the eighties was the costume era until Sylvester McCoy, who uh, out of all of them in the eighties, got the better end of the deal uh, when it came to the outfit, because um, the rest of them were just they're stuck in a costume, and that includes Tom's last uh, season. So, yeah, th th that was a bit much. But anyway. Um, all in all, uh, Peter's performance is good, and it's uh, he's got a you know a decent uh, beginning uh, for his doctor. Thanks for watching and listening. Say while you're still here, why not like and subscribe and share with your many friends? Yes. Also, check out my many stores <laughs> in the link description below. Yes, where you can get T-shirts, hats, mugs, all those goodies with my artwork on them. Oh yeah. And head over to IndiePlanet.com and pick up a copy of my comic book, Night Night. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can also catch me at my podcast, Mr. Nelson Show, on Radio Misfits, 
BitChute.com. And you can also watch my videos on BitChute.com and now on Rumble.com. Oh my goodness, so many places to watch me and my stuff. Oh yeah. And if that's not enough for you, well, you can follow me on many social media platforms and say hi to your old pal, Mr. Nelson.